and welcome back to uh, As If, a contemporary art podcast with me, Lisa Viral. I wanted to talk about so many topics today and had to like narrow them down. And I decided that, you know, we're going to actually cover a couple of things. First and foremost, we're going to talk about something that is a bit more topical, which is this whole girl things discourse online. And I wanted to talk about this article that was written on Vox that's called Girl Trends and the Repackaging of Womanhood. And I find it to be really interesting that we got so many, as per usual, you know, we got so many videos, so many TikToks, YouTube videos, um, tweets about this whole thing, about this term, you know, like girl dinner or girl math, whatever, whatever. And I started to get a bit annoyed by this whole thing. And more importantly, not even by the fact that it exists as much as I just find some takes that people have a little bit crazy had to move things around a little bit because my dog wanted to come up. This article has been released in August, on August 16th by Rebecca Jennings. And I find it to be so interesting that we keep on recycling topics and whoever has the biggest platform, that person is going to be credited for coming up with this or for, for, you know, making a topic concise and digestible for everybody or for regurgitating what they've heard on the internet already. I started to notice that this is kind of a problem that we're having right now on YouTube, that there are so many videos that are basically doing the same exact thing. There are a couple of people that I can kind of always expect a fresh take from, even if they are talking about topics that have been discussed before. And um, those two people are Shanspeer and Ro Ramden. And I would say that Ro is probably the one that always has really fresh takes to compare to everybody else on the platform. And I kind of just find it to be a little bit annoying from time to time because um, not, <laughs> not that she's... Now that she has fresh takes, I mean, the fact that we don't have enough of those in general. And I feel like maybe it is kind of an issue of oversaturation of the platform with video essays or um, commentary videos. I think that maybe that is the case, but it's just a really interesting thing to me because I just see a lot of people regurgitating the stuff that they find online. Like, for example, this article that was posted on august 16th was definitely one of the first ones to really contextualize this new thing in quotations right then we get a bunch of people who have a lot more eyes on them talking about it and you know they get i guess the credit for talking about it and that's just like it always kind of doesn't really sit right with me but it keeps on happening and it also contributes to the fact that so many people are trying to talk about trending topics to the point where even though there's like 20 videos being released this week like 17 of them are about the same exact topic and 15 out of those 17 all have the same fucking take to the point where the, even the sentences their structure everything starts to sound exactly the same it's getting to the point where it's ridiculous honestly regardless of all of that this is more of like a thing that kind of is related to what i do for a you know for a job so of course i am going to be noticing it more but when it comes to takes that i saw on twitter today and and not even not just twitter honestly it's like everywhere uh tiktok as well People just keep on talking about girl walks, girl dinners. Let me actually read a part of this article for you so you kind of understand what we're talking about, right? If you haven't heard about it, I'm going to be really brief. It is just for people who have not heard of this phenomenon at all. It's the summer or the year or maybe the decade of mostly made up micro trends involving the word girl people on tiktok and everywhere else on the internet are talking about the girl dinners which amount to thrown together plates of whatever happens to be in the fridge they're going on hot girl walks they are having feral girl summers they attempt to determine via viral pinterest mood board whether they're strawberry girls or cherry girls or vanilla girls whatever whatever you're kind of getting the idea. It's kind of a thing that can apply to anything, really. Um, and 
I started to see that there's some pushback from people nowadays who are really uncomfortable with the fact that girl started to be applied to things to kind of make them silly or um, like for example saying girl math is um, like has like a negative connotation in the sense of the math not being very logical for example which i actually personally do not think that that's what it means okay i actually have a very different opinion on this so first and foremost there are so many tweets and so many tiktoks of people being really uncomfortable with words like or with terms like girl math right so initially the term girl math was more like about just things that people in general feel about spending you know, so for their spending habits, like for example, if there is a sale, right, and the jacket that you wanted is fifty percent off, and you're saving sixty dollars, for example, and then there was also a blouse that you wanted, and it was seventy five dollars or whatever, right? You feel like you're only spending fifteen dollars on the blouse because technically you saved the money on the jacket, and. A lot of people started to get mad about those types of things, you know, when, again, this is supposed to be a joke. And when it's just a, in between girls, it has never had a negative connotation. No one ever said, oh, it's girl math because it's actual math, <laughs> because it's, it isn't like this is just a word that describes how it feels different if you spend money on something that was on sale versus not on sale, that you have this feeling that you have saved money so you can spend it on something else. It's one of those things that has been taken over by men, of course. Um, I started to see a lot of people, a lot of men who have podcasts, even podcasts that are not technically like in any way misogynistic, talking about it and like guys losing their minds over it, being like, oh my god, this is crazy. Why would she do that? This is, you know, like talking about how like it's financially irresponsible or something along those lines and genuinely speaking okay this is to me this is just another case of men not realizing that women are funny and that women sometimes joke okay because why is this thing that was actually a joke become something that dudes are talking about on podcasts i think i saw um noel and um cody talk about it i think um there's two dudes on tiktok too and they were like oh my god that's not right that's not right you're not actually saving money on this just because you're spending cash and you're not and you don't have your money coming out of your bank account doesn't mean that you didn't spend it it's a joke do you understand what that means like someone took a thing that's kind of like a feeling of you feeling like you don't you're not spending money because it's not coming out of your account when you're spending it. The reason why you feel that way is because you already took that money out and the number already dropped. At the same time, we also have this economy where we're used to paying digitally. We're not used to carrying cash anymore. So it feels a lot more like spending money when you're using your card than when you're using physical bills because the bills, as soon as they come out of your account, whenever you check your account, which we do a lot because we have to pay bills and other things like that, Whenever you open your account, it doesn't actually look any different. So that's why it feels just psychologically different. It's girl math was supposed to be, okay, about us just making jokes. Okay, yeah. Can you imagine? About things that are related to strange phenomena where you don't feel like you're spending money for some reason. And just making jokes about those reasons. It doesn't mean that people actually think that when they're paying 50% less for a jacket, that they somehow earned that difference and now can spend it on another thing without the money being actually spent. Like they, everyone understands that it's not how it works. It's just a feeling that you verbalize and make a joke about. Okay, and now people are like, well, this is the reason like we can't be doing this because it's infantilizing or it's misogynistic or it's making um, girl things sound like they're dumb things, whatever. Once again, this change is happening because men have gotten to it. Okay, and they started to not 
understand the concept as they always do because for some reason unless it's a very easy to understand joke they just can't fucking fathom it even when they're adults and should technically have that level of comprehension for some reason they don't and just why are we supposed to dumb down our humor just for terms to not get a negative connotation or whatever like when people are using male gaze or the gaze wrong there's nothing i can do and i'm an art student so not a student actually (laughs) a graduate it's pissing me off it is pissing me off that people don't know how to use that term correctly i do not like the way people cannot comprehend the easiest things we've already talked about how people don't have media literacy whatsoever just because a bunch of stock bros cannot understand the meaning the actual meaning of american psycho does not make it into a bad or stupid film or a film that glorifies what it actually is making fun of just because they want it to be stupid or just because they do not comprehend what's going on does not change the thing itself entirely and inherently okay i think that you know what the problem is whenever you see those videos of guys talking about girl math or whatever why is nobody saying to them that no one hello no one actually thinks that this is real math i i don't even know if there's any point in explaining it actually now that i think about it because i don't think that anyone's gonna understand what's the point if making a couple of jokes and putting girl in the joke right like being like oh this is girl math or whatever especially when it comes to things that are literally about psychological phenomena of feeling like you're not spending money even though you are right that's the funny part about it if we can't handle that using the word girl in it without people turning misogynistic and thinking that women are actually stupid i think that the problem is actually that the misogyny is already there don't you think like those men who are sitting there like oh my god why like that's not actually how it works they genuinely think that women are this dumb and i'm not interested to explain to them the reality like what's the point if they haven't gotten it by this point us stopping our jokes and being afraid that they're going to misinterpret it and start using girl math as a bad term or whatever, it's not going to fix the fact that they're still misogynist. Like, it's just not going to do it. Sorry. People also started to come up with terms that, once again, they don't understand the joke. So they started to say girl science when they're talking about, like, mixing two types of shampoo together or something like that. And it's like, okay, you're kind of missing the point a little bit, but I don't know. I think that my intelligence is still going to be there and it's still going to be intact and men are still going to be dickheads and they're still going to be misogynists and I'm not going to stop joking just for the sake of not spreading the wrong idea. There's no spreading the wrong idea. If they don't get it, they're quite frankly just dumb as shit. And like, why are we explaining anything to them at this point? If you're that stupid and your level of just comprehension is so poor i don't think that there's anything we can do about it genuinely as a society i think that this is it if a guy would start making jokes about girl math to me and like clearly in a derogatory way or not understanding the concept or whatever i would just go dude i think that you might gonna need an undergrad in humor learn what referential and dry and witty humor actually is and then we'll talk about it okay because i'm just tired of this i'm tired that we are even talking about this and we're starting to attack other women for using this term for making jokes for having fun for the love of god you could just correct if you see that for example someone is not using girl math correctly and they're saying that girl math is just like math that's incorrect for example you can just correct them and tell them that oh that's not what the term means or that's not what it's supposed to be but what's the point of being like we should all stop putting girls and and things together it's so it's gonna change everything it's gonna make everyone misogynistic baby i think they already are anyway there's also this part where um in the article it says a solid percentage if not most of the people participating in and discussing girl trends are women which therefore makes it feel slightly infantilizing and icky and like why should a 30 year old care what type of girl they are 
Shouldn't we have figured ourselves out by now? You could make the argument that pathologizing the things women and girls do smells a bit too strongly of gender essentialism. You could say that labeling normal human behaviors as girl coded only otherizes women in an already patriarchal world. But I would argue that both miss the point because this supposed girl trends aren't really trends at all. They are marketing campaigns. First and foremost, I agree that they are marketing campaigns, but at the same time, this whole argument of infantilization uh, when it comes to using girl and woman has always pissed me off because the, the issue is not the fact that we're using the word girl, okay? The reason, okay, I understand where someone might be coming from when they're saying that it's infantilizing okay because we don't say like boy whatever for example like like boy dinner (laughs) actually we do but we also don't whenever we say that some man in his 30s is a certain type of person we usually say something guy like sports guy a hippie guy whatever the fuck i honestly don't know because i'm like i don't pay attention to archetypes of men but in any case we usually say the word guy which is kind of more of a casual way of saying a man instead of because the thing is saying oh he's a sportsman or he's a hippie man it's a little weird it doesn't sound right because the word man is a bit too serious the same way as the word woman feels a bit too serious being like oh this is woman coded or whatever it just doesn't roll off the tongue because we are making jokes here these are jokey jokes okay this is not serious stuff you can't be like oh this is woman math because it's supposed to be a joke that's why we're using a word that has a bit of a lighter tone to it i'm sure that if we would have had another word that wouldn't be girl or woman but would still have that lighter tone we would use it Okay, this is just a problem of English language that we don't have a word like that, okay? Tell me a word that's actually popular in the casual vernacular, not something that's literally from 17th, 14th century, okay? Like wench or some shit. What word could we use that wouldn't be woman? Because woman is too clinical. It's too serious. The same way as man is. We don't usually label things as something like man whatever man blank we would say or that this guy is a this type of man or whatever we say guy because guy is more casual do you understand this is just semantics and honestly just a problem not even semantics linguistics because it's a problem of english language there's no word that wouldn't be girl wouldn't be something that's usually used for an underage person that's at the same time not so serious and clinical like woman is okay (laughs) like women and men are clinical and are serious and i don't mean that you can't use them casually obviously i just mean that they have that vibe and whenever we make jokes a lot of things are in the unsaid territory a lot of things are in the vibe territory that's the reason why it's really hard to be funny in a foreign language okay um and i mean like funny outside of like physical comedy unless you start to understand the language really well and the culture really well you have a hard time making people laugh or being perceived as witty and funny it's precisely because this is the highest form of language where you can actually feel the vibe of the words now okay like you can learn equivalents of words like woman right girl you can learn those in other languages like fum or fee or whatever the fuck right you can just translate them but Oftentimes, the feeling of the word is something that you acquire after years of speaking the language freely, you know? There's obviously some things that you will catch on to quickly, but some things you will have to really work for. And I think that it's really interesting that so many people genuinely don't understand that the reason why people use girl a lot is because it's just not as serious as woman and that is it if you don't agree with me and you're like into linguistics the english language whatever let me know what word you think we are not using that could have been an equivalent of using guy something that's a bit more casual 
and I don't don't say lasses, okay? Because that's also cr- crazy. Because we don't say lads as often either, do we? So I also wanted to talk about this painting called the irritating gentleman and i think that probably a lot of you have seen it in the past couple of years because it's gone it's gotten um quite viral a few times on tiktok especially and i wanted to talk about it because first and foremost of course it is ridiculous that this is such a universal experience it transcends cultures it transcends time it's a painting that's been created in 1887 of a girl on a train with this ugly ass man being very close to her, trying to talk to her, whatever, on a train, being very gross, whatever, whatever, right? The reason why I wanted to talk about this painting is there's a few context things about it that are kind of going beyond the obvious, you know, annoying ass behavior of this man. But what I wanted to talk about, first and foremost, the girl is clearly very, very young. In European tradition, well, it depends on what kind of European country. So this is a German artist painting a German girl, as far as I understand. And for German people, usually girls would have their hair down and then would have them up when they grow up. And for some other cultures, like for example, I know that for many Slavic cultures would have your hair in a braid until you would marry someone. And I don't remember what the hell happens with the hair afterwards. They don't let it out completely. I think that they put it up, but it's like, instead of wearing one braid, you put it up. Girl, I don't know. In any case, there's usually something along those lines going on. And in Germany, France, I believe Britain, the women oftentimes stopped wearing their hair down in public when they grew up, you know? So the girl is definitely very very young she's also quite obviously crying and this whole painting is already quite expressive and interesting to talk about and look at just because of the whole interaction right but above all else there are a couple more things about it that i find interesting and those things are the fact that this girl is wearing all black it's not it was not very common for kids to wear all black especially when it comes to kids that were well off and she seems to be well off at least to a certain extent because of you know the quality of her clothes but she's wearing all black which is just not something that kids or even teenagers would wear or even adults honestly (laughs) would wear unless they were in mourning this seems to me that this girl is leaving a funeral or maybe is going to a funeral Regardless, this dynamic with this kind of connotation being added to it is just really, really something. And the fact that she is staring right at the viewer, at whomever is looking at the painting, is also making you feel like you're complicit and like not helping, even though it's obviously a fucking painting. Um, And another thing that I found really interesting that I wanted to mention was the guy at the very, very back who's this old gentleman who's just like looking away i wouldn't even say that it seems like he's doing it on purpose it doesn't seem like he's like trying to divert his gaze somewhere else as much as like he just doesn't give a fuck like it's just business as usual you know which adds to the atmosphere of how like annoying (laughs) the entire scene is how gross it all is and i think that Um, I think it's really interesting that this painting has become so popular nowadays in the past couple of years that it's been added to (laughs) knowyourmeme.com. Like, isn't it a little bit crazy? So the painting was posted to Tumblr for the first time where it got a lot of engagement in 2012. And... um, a lot of people started to, you know, like, zoom in on her face and put, like, FML on it and whatever. Just, like, making jokes about, like, what the guy could have been saying to her, you know? Writing a bunch of captions, kind of coming up with lines, in quotations, that men say whenever they're being irritating gentlemen. And, um, well, gentlemen, not gentlemen, sorry. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about this artist... Uh, Berthold Waltz. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but (laughs) 
I'm not really well versed in German, okay? So I don't know. But and it seems like a lot of his paintings kind of focus on a very particular moment, which is sometimes is called like a problem picture, which means that it's a painting, for example, that captures a specific moment of a conflict or a conversation like he usually has multiple people in the painting obviously he's done a lot of commissions where it's just one person or whatever but i really find it interesting that he liked to portray people in a very dynamic type of scene because you know i mean it's not really that rare per se but i think that in a lot of victorian paintings um there was a lot more subdued emotion to compare to something that has been painted in like 15th or 16th century or something medieval where there's like really weird not very expressive per se but really weird imagery going on with people just i don't know having dragons come out of their asses or something <laughs> and in this case um a problem pic- a problem picture the definition is Um, A genre of art popular in late Victorian painting, which would be at the end of 19th century, so like 1870s and, you know, until the beginning of the 20th century, characterized by the deliberately ambiguous depiction of a key moment in a narrative that can be interpreted in several different ways or which portrays an unresolved dilemma. Obviously, there's been a lot of artists who have been painting key scenes, but... I think that with a lot of these, um, especially the one that we were talking about today, which is the Irritating Gentleman, these paintings are not referencing a well-known conflict sometimes, you know, which is a little bit more, uh, it was a little bit more of a novel idea back then to paint something that does not have a well-known narrative. Usually you would be painting scenes from the bible for example or you would be painting scenes from greek mythology or something along those lines you know and painting a girl in train with a guy who's being all pervy or whatever is not as common of a scene at least it wasn't at the time i wouldn't say that he was super innovative with any of this as much as i think that it does show this thing that kind of became popular while this artist was working which was the problem shot the problem picture the problem painting whatever and i think that a lot of people always try to say that the guy who's in the very back of the painting is like uneasy about the situation but i actually think that he's either trying to just not even look at what's going on or he's not giving a fuck like his expression is not giving a fuck at all but considering that he's looking away i have a feeling that maybe he's doing it on purpose so he doesn't have to get involved or something like that it's just not i don't know if there's like any i'm not seeing any unease in that character in that person in the background but that's just like that's speculation once again because i am basing it on just kind of reading the expression on his face which is not always very reliable um especially when the person is in the background of the picture there's another painting that i really like by this artist uh which is the letter and in that painting again he he was quite good at capturing emotions of the moment there is a woman who just read a letter or at least read a part of the letter and she looks distressed distress in a way that not like active distress but distress in a way where you're kind of zoning out because of how shitty things are that's kind of what she looks like and there's also a little girl who's looking up at her and trying to get her attention and i think that just the setup the execution is quite well done i think that sometimes in a lot of paintings the people are kind of a bit too they're lacking concern in their faces or expression and i think that these paintings do actually portray the emotion that he was trying to portray really well um Anyway, this is all that I wanted to talk about today and um, I am editing a new video. 
about reacting to a movie, but it's gonna be actually better quality than the Twilight one. Don't come for me. <laughs> and um, I'll see you next week. Bye.